morning, and as we talked about just the power, the power of the tongue and the power to do good, but James certainly warns us that the that a little spark can ignite, you know, a forest fire. A little spark can do a lot of damage as well. In James chapter 3 in the verses, beginning at verse 3, and prior to that, the pretext that we talked about this morning, James said, not, don't, not many should desire to be teachers because you will receive a stricter judgment. And so now that's not, he's not saying that to discourage folks from teaching, but just understand the, the requirements, understand the responsibility. Uh, don't seek to be, and there's a wisdom is, is really what is kind of sets the backdrop for what James says in James chapter three. He's going to end with wisdom. He begins with wisdom. Do you seek to be a teacher just to be seen as wise? Is that the goal? Because sometimes in this world, people want to be wise. People want to be smart. Viewed as smart. Is that the goal? He says, so be mindful that not many are masters because you will receive a more harsh or a harsher judgment, a stricter judgment. So be, rem remember that. We, he starts with make sure you do things with wisdom as not carnal wisdom, but wisdom uh, as, the mo as the true motivation, not the wisdom that comes from below, but wisdom that comes from above. We'll break that down later. So we're going to close with that piece. But then James talks about the tongue. Behold, look, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us. We turn about their whole body. Whole body is turned, regulated by a small piece. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, so huge, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about the very small helm, a rudder, whithersoever the governor, the pilot, listed. So that pilot turns it. And a small rudder turns a big ship. Even so the tongue. See, the illustration of a horse, a bit in a horse's mouth, the illustration of a rudder, a small rudder or helm that turns a big ship, he uses that to two illustrations to take us to what he really wants to talk about, even so the tongue. A little member is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindling. We spoke this morning about... Uh, the things that we can do with our tongue, we can lie. We can tear down. We can curse. And on the Old Testament, a child curses his father and mother. That's capital. That's a capital offense. And I didn't grow up under the Old Testament law, but I grew up, we grew up under the Cubby's law. And all she had to tell me at one point was, like, before you rule me, I'll take you out. That's all I needed to hear. I didn't know Hebrew or Greek. Now, I don't know if y'all caught what I just said there. That was a practical, personal example. Grew up in a household where you didn't dare disrespect. And so what my point is, we have God's creation, and James lets us know that out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursing. And if you look at James chapter 3 and drop down a little bit, turn with me to the book of James. You should be there already. Let's drop down a few verses. Because in James chapter 3, James talks about specifically Verse 8, we're going to take it from there. But the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith we bless, bless we God, verse 9, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of the image of God. So what James is saying is, let us be mindful of what we say. As we said this morning, let's remember the source of it all. And I'll point to it again, as I've done throughout the day. Jesus makes it plain in Matthew chapter 15. What defiles a man is not what goes in, and what defiles a man is what it proceeds from the heart. And you got blasphemies. I mean, it starts here with our mindset, our heart condition. And James continues with this thought process. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursing. Blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Growing up, we'd be told, watch your mouth. Saints, I would ask us to watch our hearts. We can have toxic things on our heart, and things don't just slip out. It's in there. Let us be mindful. We talked about a heart check this morning. If you're taking notes from this morning, check your heart, your mind, not the blood pump, but the mindset. Check the company that you keep. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. Be not deceived. Don't be tricked. Don't be fooled. Evil communications, evil companionships, 
corrupt good manners. It can wear you down. You will begin to act like gossipers hang out with gossipers. And it is amazing. Even the Lord's church today, today, saints, throughout this land, we have situations where those who should be more mature are hanging out with those who are less mature. And the, the less mature are influencing those who seemingly should be more mature. Why do gospelers call you? I will tell it straight every as long as I have a voice. Ask yourself that question. And saints of God, when James is talking about the things that should not be so, I want us to recognize wisdom. And we're going to talk about it because it's a word, Sophia. And see, wisdom. And what I love about what James is going to do, he's going to give us two types. Keep in mind, he's talking about the tongue, talking about the dangers it can cause. He's talking about the tongue can no man tame. He begins with wisdom. What is your motivation for wanting to be a teacher? And then he closes James chapter three with two types of wisdom. But let's talk about wisdom. Sophia, I love that de you can define wisdom in so many different ways. People say wisdom is knowledge. OK, but it's not just knowledge. It's acute. It's something that's, that's acute. But very fine, very detailed. It's an expertise. Wisdom is how you relate to something. Wisdom is just not looking at just what is, but what can be. Wisdom is not just how do I get through this, but how do we get to the goal? Which means wisdom is going to have to restrain us at times. Wisdom, wisdom teaches us we got to shut our mouths sometimes. Wisdom can put, wisdom can squash something that could turn into something real heavy. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation, you don't have to answer out loud, where if you had said something, if you had responded to something, it would have gone up a thousand more degrees. Can anybody relate? Person's dead wrong in their feelings, uh, 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 and you're like, Sometimes you have to walk away. <laughs> and sometimes the failure to use wisdom, you want to point out everything that they're wrong about. <laughs> pop, pop, pop. How did that work out? Mm. My point is this. Wisdom. Expertise, acuteness of knowledge, knowledge that's applied to the situation. Wisdom requires situational leadership. There comes a time when Jesus turned over the tables. There's a time when Jesus is, they're murmuring about Jesus in Luke chapter 15, and he teaches them three parables about a lost sheep, a lost coin, a prodigal, wayward, off-track son. He didn't fight the Pharisees and scribes there. Wisdom calls for situational leadership. Wisdom calls for us to rebuke a gossiper, not give in to the foolishness. Wisdom calls for us to love and go the extra mile. Not try to prove what that we're right. Amen. And so as we think about the tongue tonight, the Bible lets us know James chapter 3, beginning at verse 10. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing as we read, my brother, these things ought not to be so. That the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? No. Can the fig tree, my brother, bear olive berries? No. Either a vine, figs? No. So can no fountain both yield salt, water, and fresh. It's one or the other. Who is a wise man? Here we go. And endued with knowledge among you. Who is a wise man? See, it's not enough to know. What did James say in the very next chapter, James 4, verse 17? Him that knoweth to do good and do it to not. To him it is sin. Hey, no, nobody cares what I know. What are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? It's not a intellectual. Christianity is not some intellectual test. It's a way of life. Another definition of wisdom. If you notice, you define wisdom. Let me give you a sixth definition of wisdom. See, wisdom is to practice living righteously. Practice. What do you mean by practice? You are in the habit you are in the habit of doing things in such a way that it can yield and it can yield good works, edify someone else. As the wise man Solomon said this morning, you know, we talked about 
say, let no, as a matter of fact, Paul mentioned it as well in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 4, about verse 29. Let no filthy communication proceed out of your mouth, but say that which is to edifying, edifying of the saints. Build somebody up. That's wise. Even when your the response is not favorable, you may get an unfavorable response as you seek to edify somebody else. Let me pause for a minute. Did y'all hear what I just said? You may seek to edify somebody and you may be attacked in response. Wisdom. You may seek to, you know, encourage, bring bring a lost sheep back home. And it's there's some elder stories. We can't tell them out loud. Let's just say it's quite interesting how saints can respond to fellow saints. When they're caught up in their feelings. It's a shame before God. But wisdom teaches us to just hold on. You can't take it personally. When the Israel, when the children of Israel said, "We want, a, we want us a king, so we can make a name for ourselves," God told them, "Said, no, you, they ain't rejecting you. They're rejecting me." And so, saints, listen to what James has to say. Two types of wisdom for your notes. James chapter three. Verse 13, who is a wise man and do with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation, wisdom, applied, good lifestyle. His works with meekness of wisdom, a lowliness of mind in the way in which someone lives their life. Wisdom. Y'all see it? But if you have bitter envy, if anyone here struggles with envy, you probably won't say it out loud because that's that that's too much like right as my grandma would say, but if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, don't glory and lie not against the truth. Brothers and sisters, something we have to pray for in the Lord's church because it's amazing. And again, I can't help but compare, but when I see business groups, fraternal organizations, uh, other just tightening organizations, sometimes in the Lord's church, we don't like seeing each other succeed. And then there were crickets. Let me say it again. We should be each other's biggest fans. I'm not talking about committing ourselves puffed up. I'm not talking about that. But when a brother or sister is doing something that's growing, we should, hey, man, that's my brother. That's my sister. Hey, man. Because that can lead to souls being saved. Do you all realize that? I shared here maybe 15 years ago. Things that awards, or whatever was going on, and it got to a point where it didn't feel right. So I stopped sharing. I'm saying this openly and honest. I stopped sharing stuff that I had won. I stopped sharing because the response was different. It wasn't like my business colleagues. Wow, that's great. Good job. Oh, that's nice. I said openly and honestly. I said, okay, if that's a stumbling block, maybe I just won't share it among my brothers and sisters in Christ. Because some of us can't handle that. I say that with no angst. I say that, but just telling you the truth. I hope, trust, and pray. If any of your kids, if you win anything, share it with the church. The elder, as I cut off my mic, <laughs> no, I was playing. That was funny. I, maybe I'm too far. The elders want to know, amen? So we can share that with kids growing up and doing all that. Because Again, if we are uncomfortable with each other's success, then the devil is winning, and he won't win ultimately. We know that. Wisdom. When our kids can say, wow, my friends at school are more excited about it than church family. Little things can cause people to stray away. And so the Bible says, watch this, envy, strife. James chapter 3, I give the personal example because it's heartfelt. For where envying and strife is and conflict, there is confusion and every evil work. Our kids need to feel at home in the Lord's church. We should not compromise teaching or doctrine, but we need to be practical. We need to be human. People need to be able to relate to us. It's not just the intellect. There's a humane. We have fellowship activities. Why is it that some people avoid fellowship? Because There's something going on with them. And maybe there's some hurt that we need to address. And wisdom teaches us to just stop and listen for a minute. Wisdom, acute detail, experience, situational, uh, situational awareness, the bigger picture, going beyond taking the law sometimes. 
regulating ourselves. The Bible goes on, James chapter 3. Here it is, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. I love this. Then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. So if you are hard to approach or hard to talk to, that's not godly wisdom. If you're hard to get along with, that's not godly wisdom. I don't say this to hurt anybody's feelings. I shared, a, I just publicly shared a hurt that I had 15 years ago. But I say that in the context of, thank God we can grow from that. We have very successful brothers and sisters in Christ. Share that so we can grow. Look at that brother sister being faithful and achieving all this stuff and staying faithful. My God. Because there are those who have become, quote unquote, successful in the world. We don't see them anymore. Y'all got to pray for that brother. Maybe that brother or sister felt a certain way because of us. We, we, sometimes we may never know. Peaceable, pure, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, no respect of persons, without hypocrisy, not saying one thing and doing another. This is the wisdom that's from above. Amen. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. That's the wisdom from above. Now I want to go back and contrast that. What about envy? I don't know if anyone here, and please don't answer out loud, if anyone here has ever just felt, maybe you don't, you can't break, but it's a feeling. If someone is growing or someone is, you just don't feel comfortable with someone else's success. And you're like, I'm so happy for you. And it's hard for you to smile. There may be a little bit of envy there. There may be a little envy. We got to call it straight. You struggle with someone else's success. You struggle with something what somebody else has. A little covetousness, a little envy. We got to call it as it is, brothers and sisters. And wisdom teaches us to just break it down so you can understand. You hear the word envy, jealousy. Ever been jealous over somebody? It's like, we've had to deal with that. Jealousy, envy. So look at what the Bible says. I, I mentioned verse 13. Let him show, latter part of verse 13, let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But here we go. If you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, don't glory and lie not against the truth. This wisdom, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly. This is worldly wisdom. This next word is the key, sensual. You are, you're feeding the flesh. Somehow your growth or lack of growth, your growth stirs up the demons inside of me. Let me say that again. If someone else's growth stirs up, you, you can tell, and you got, I, I actually said this to people. I said, you know, so if my success is stirring up something in you, then I'm not going to stop growing. Amen. And when people are jealous against you, you can't you, you have to use wisdom, but don't stop growing. Say, well, let me stop growing. Maybe I don't want this sister, this brother to feel. No, you got to keep growing. Hopefully, prayerfully, you can help them. The next word, the Bible says this wisdom is earthly, sensual. What's the next word? Devilish. Devilish. All in the context of the tongue. Wisdom. Don't seek to be wise for the sake of just being wise. Don't let bitter envy be in your heart. The tongue can no man tame. Because then you start getting, you get into flattery. You get into uh, envy, jealousy, as James is talking about. And he goes on to say, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. So let me help you as we did this morning. If we focus our attention on the cross, we have to go through to get to. All of us have made mistakes. All of us can use more wisdom, not this earthly wisdom, not just puffed up. I just want more and more knowledge. So I want I want to end this lesson, this two part lesson to help us, to help us. And I use practical examples because, again, whether it's kids in school, teach your kids. When they do well in school and good, good grades, this this devilish behavior starts early. I'm devilish behavior starts early. 
I told you all when I was coaching this little, little Pop Warner football, little kids, cheerleaders come by. I'm like, look at these little cutie pies. They cussed out my whole football team, turned in unison and kept walking. I'm like, somebody taught them that. These little cutie pies didn't learn. They... I was speechless. I was like, hi, little girls. Bop, 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 bop. Shame on adults who set such a bad example. Don't think kids aren't watching. They heard someone say those words. And devilish behavior envy starts early. I remember Alexi coming home from school. It's like, the girls are just mean to me. I didn't do anything. I just finished my paper and asked them if they needed any help. And they're like, you think you're this, you think you're that. It starts early. And here's the breaking news. Brothers and sisters, sometimes it continues while we're adults. And this is the part that hurts. And even when people have been baptized into Christ, they can still act like that. If we don't tell it straight, then we're not doing our job. This is what we have to deal with. And this is what can cause people to go astray. And it gets in the way. And so let me help us tonight. When we use wisdom properly, when we, when we grow, when we, do, when we acquire the knowledge, we use it situationally. We use it for the good, for the greater good. Where we can have that acute knowledge and experience we will then act like this. Turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs the 15th chapter. We don't want to focus on that earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom. The wisdom that's, that's more, that's earthly. And it's not what you say, it's when you say it. Husbands, can you relate to that? <laughs> Let me move on. <laughs> Brother's scared to say, man, y'all just lip sync it. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 23. The Bible says, a man hath joy by the answer of his mouth and a word spoken in due season. A timely word. How good is it? Lord, have mercy. Some, you got to know when to say it. Wisdom. Stay in the book of Proverbs. Let's drop down. Let's go to chapter 25. Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 11. What does wisdom look like? So again, you think about, there's a term we use in business all the time. I'm in the process of interviewing, I had 10 interviews over the course of the last two weeks, and I'm looking for, the word we use is, we're looking for a good fit. We're looking for a good fit for our team, right? So if something is, is, is a good fit, it's appropriate. It fills a void. It fills a gap. Proverbs chapter 25, in the verses 11, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold. And pictures of silver, apples of gold in a setting of silver. It's beautiful. Knowing what to say, when to say it, wisdom apply. Amen. Because the tongue can no man tame. You know, our flesh, it's easy. It's, I don't want to say it's easy. We can get in the habit of cussing, lying. Anybody, can anybody relate? About five of us. Rest of y'all, lying is still a sin. But my point is, we get in the habit. As we said this morning, just like punctuality, it becomes a habit. Create new habits. You can stop lying. You got to get out of the habit. Amen. I shared as a kid, my mom is here to verify. Trust and verify. How just, you said, Gail, you better stop by that line. There were consequences for lying. I got out of it. <laughs> it does not bode well. The second death, all liars. And so as we look at the word of God tonight, what are your, our takeaways? One, seek wisdom from above. Two, check your heart. Three, my, be mindful of the company you keep. Be mindful of how people impact you and how you impact others. Here's how you can test that. It may be quite revealing. Look at your pattern of behavior with people. Look at your own track record. Do people come to you and who comes to you and what do you talk about? Do that. 
And those people that come to you, are they here? Are they faithful? And what do you talk about? We had an open and honest conversation with our brothers not long ago about wisdom. How we had sisters from other congregations talking to some of our brothers about what they didn't like at their congregation. We were like, you can stop that right now. You take that right back to where you have your issue. Amen, brethren. Amen, sisters. <laughs> you can take that right back to where you know. If you got issues with some brothers somewhere else, you go talk to those brothers. That's how foolishness gets started. Look at your individual track record with people. It may be sobering. And that's where you have to look at yourself. And say, I gotta, maybe I got to be more mature. Because I got immature people coming to me talking about issues with this, 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 and this. We're not having a mature conversation. And they're not here. We have some members who are no longer faithful here that I see on social media talking about spiritual things that contradict the Bible. Brothers and sisters, timely words, godly wisdom, appropriate words, and not only that, Proverbs 15 and 28. This is one I love. Proverbs 15 and 20. I should have kept you in 15. Proverbs 15 and 28. We could have just stayed there for the whole lesson almost. Proverbs chapter 15 and the verse is 28. And this is what, as, as elders, we got to do this all the time. And I want you all to be mindful. As you grow and mature, you got to study how to answer people. Did, you, did y'all catch that? You just can't just blurt and don't just blurt. Listen carefully to what people are saying. Well, I, well, I, well, I. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's why I mean, I, in, growing up, Brother Rick, I mean, I, I, now I see the wisdom of some of those men that trained us. They would say, is that right? They let people just talk. Mm -hmm. So that's the way you feel. Mm -hmm. Is that right? And what they're doing is just soaking it up because you're studying how you're going to answer because people give themselves away. Wisdom. Ladies, if a young man comes up to you and says, hey, my name is Bill's above. What's your name? B. No, no. What? Give me your full name. Bills, but what's your middle name? They call me L. L for what? Lucifer? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, you go your way. Listen to the detail. Listen to not only what people say, watch what they do. And don't create a false narrative saying, well, he could be. No, you don't, don't twist the picture. When they show you who they are, believe them. Proverbs 15 and verse 28. I got to wrap up here in a minute. Proverbs 15 and verse 28. The time's moving too fast. The heart of, a, of the righteous studieth to answer. Did y'all see that? Check your heart. Our heart condition, our mindset is, I want to grow in such a level of maturity that I know what to say, when to say it, and how to say it based on the situation. Let me say that again. I want to mature. I want to be mature enough to help somebody, to edify somebody, knowing what to say, when to say it, and how to say it. The heart of, a, of the righteous, Proverbs 15 and 28, study it to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. Just here you go. Be careful. A quick answer is not always a wise answer. Timing. Fitting. Fitting, appropriate. Another word for fitting. The appropriate thing to say. The timing of what you say. When you say it. How you say it. And I'll close with this. I had a sister say today. She said, thank you because... I was verbally attacked by somebody, and I chose to just walk away. And if I had responded, it could have gotten pretty ugly. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation like that. But you can diffuse a situation by wisdom, by using wisdom. You don't have to win. I, let me win this quote-unquote fight. That's what the flesh teach. That's what the flesh wants. That's that devilish, earthly, sensual wisdom teach. And husbands, wives family, whatever the situation may be, co-workers, neighbor in this particular context, the sister shared, but she diffused the situation because she said, I just, thank God I'm here because I needed to be encouraged. Because in the moment that that meek mindset, meek, not weak, meek, lowly mindset, I'm going to walk away from the situation because this is not good. 
as opposed to the ego. It's like, I'm going to go ahead and combat you head to head. I don't know if anybody's made that mistake. I have. Am I only by myself with this? Amen. Thank you. It took too long. <laughs> when we think about diffusing a situation, when we have knowledge and understanding, we can truly diffuse situations by controlling our last point, Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 19. Proverbs, the 10th chapter and verse 19. We talk about true knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 10 and verse 19. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. There's a time, my brothers and sisters, where we need to just Zip it. In the multitude of words that I mean, you, we can just dig a deeper and deeper hole for ourselves sometimes. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. The tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many. Those but fools die for want of wisdom. Don't seek just to be the smartest in the room. Seek wisdom. The wisdom that descends from above. And as we close tonight, with our focus on the cross, with our focus on heaven, let us be more restrained when it calls for restraint. Let us be vocal when it calls for us to be vocal. There are times we need to speak up. There's times we need to shut up. Amen. Or oh, excuse me, hush up. Same thing. There's times where you need to truly, truly just lead the situation. And so, brothers and sisters, I pray that we recognize the power of the tongue to edify, but also to tear down. Let's avoid any filthy communication out of our mouths, but let's avoid it in our heart. And so as we hasten on and close out this lesson, it's only to come on. I hope, trust, and pray that something was said tonight. This caused all of us to just to want to just be more mature, not in what we say and what we want to do, but in who we are and how we live our lives. When Paul wrote to the Church of Christ at Galatia in Galatians chapter 2, and the verse is 20, one of my favorite passages of scripture. When Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The life that I now live in the flesh, the, my manner of living is Christ-like because I recognize what he's done for me. We have to constantly battle the flesh. Constantly. So I pray that we can edify one another. And, the, and one of the things that I had to grow and mature from, and if I never win anything else again, no problem. <laughs> but if I do get something else, I'm going to share it with all y'all. Because bitterness teaches me, well, forget that. But I'm, I'm, I said it out loud. I'm going to say this part out loud. If I get anything else, whatever it is, it may be the, the best pack of now and later award. That's candy. I'm going to say, look, y'all, share somebody share these sour apple now and laters with me. Be me and Aiken, somebody. Amen. See, that's what you see. Don't. It's like somebody saying, well, I was hurt in a relationship. I'll never love again. Don't give anybody that much credit. Give God the thanks and you can move on and be stronger. Amen. Y'all going to make me preach another 30 minutes, but I choose not to. Wisdom. No, when to hush up. So don't just, if someone hurt you, if you've hurt someone else, if you've had a grudge, if you've struggled with envy or jealousy, please pivot and give God the opportunity to, glorify, to be glorified in your life. Don't get stuck in a rut, as many do. Not forgiving themselves. Move on. And the best way to, if you, if some, for those outside the body of Christ, the best way to get that fresh start, you don't get right, then come to Christ. Just as you are, you come to you come to Jesus Christ, recognizing after hearing and believing what Jesus Christ has done for our sins. You must hear and believe the gospel. He died for our sins. 
He was buried. He rose again the third day. Having heard and believed that, are you willing to change your mind? Repent. That's what it's all about. I mean, I don't like the way I'm living. I'm doing not living in concordance with in accordance with Jesus Christ, with his word. And I turn. Acts 17, 30, in the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. And as we think about the word of God tonight, we make decisions every day. Choose Christ. Having heard and believed the gospel of Jesus Christ, having repented of our sins, we must confess Christ to be the son of the living God. And upon that confession, you're immersed, baptized in water for the remission of your sins. You rise up to walk, live in a brand new way of life. Living, growing, not only in knowledge, but applying wisdom. It's not just what we know. We can quote a thousand scriptures and not be wise. Apply it. Live it. Fitting. Timing. Appropriateness. That's the beauty. That's mad. That's maturity. You can see it. And I'm thankful to God that there's power in the blood because we make mistakes. And saints of God, if we fall short, if we fall short as children of God, repentance, confession, and prayer. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. James 5 and verse 16. We confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you stand in need tonight, won't you come right now as we together stand and as we together sing? Won't you come? Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you are evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb.